destroy. That's former Governor Martin O'Malley, um, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton all vying for the presidency. Seymour Hirsch, your response and how these different views uh, ally with either President Obama or the Joint Chiefs of Staff, as you've laid out in your piece, Military to Military. Well, clearly, what, what Mr. O'Malley and, and um, Bernie Sanders said would be would ring very um, um, solidly with the Joint Chiefs. They would be in great distress about what um, uh, Hillary Clinton said, uh, because I think um, um, uh, you know <laughs> the fact is that if you really want to look at it, uh, Bashar is still the president of Syria. Uh, the Russians are bombing in Syria at his invitation. We are bombing in Syria without his invitation. And so it's hard sometimes for Americans to think that we're not always on the, the side of the angels on legal issues, but we're certainly, uh, by any normal standard of, uh, you know, if there was a normal standard of international conduct, um, uh, uh, we would be uh, uh, the bad guys in that, just in terms of legalities. We're not invited in. We're doing it. Obviously, there's a lot of agreement and there's a lot of coordination going on with all the bombing, much more than we know. The Syrians are certainly coordinating with the Russians, and we're certainly coordinating with everybody. No pilot, no pilot from any country is going to fly into a combat zone without knowing exactly who's there and whether it's safe or not. Uh, so uh, there's much more cooperation going on even now than you can see. Um, um, but the idea. <laughs> Uh, you know, and in your opening, you mentioned that we seem to moderate our, our view, and I think those are words that are being said. But the reality is, uh, we still always say, well, we don't, we're not saying, we're not talking about regime change now. Uh, you well, think didn't that maybe Kerry meet with Putin and then completely reverse the position? No, not quite, because the position was, if you read the transcripts, there was a con he had a, a news conference you know, or briefing after the meeting with uh, Lavrov, the uh, foreign minister of Russia, in which Kerry said. It's always this. The caveat is always, but we don't think he can be in power while these negotiations can go on. He won't be able to preside over the negotiations. In other words, uh, he's such a dissident force in this that we can't have a legitimate uh, negotiation with various uh, groups, some of which we believe are moderate, uh, against all most of the intelligence that's available. We still, the United States, the president still believes there are moderates there to work with. And there's just not much from you know, the Joint Chiefs certainly don't think there's any intelligence for it, no, no does the, the DIA. In fact, one of the things I did in this article um, is I ended up talking to Michael Flynn, who had been the director of the DIA from uh, uh, 2012 to 2014. At the time, the assessment I wrote about came out, and Flynn was careful not to talk about a highly classified paper. But he did say, I can just say, tell you that if the American public saw all the papers, uh, that were going into the uh, into the government and from us the DIA the intelligence into the Pentagon into the White House they would be very upset and he also said at this uh, um, in an interview with their Spiegel uh, a week or so maybe about two three weeks ago now it was published last week he also just didn't understand why we were fighting the Russians why not let the Russians come in. And what was the concern? The Russians' concern is not about establishing a new world order. Their concern is terrorism, primarily. Uh, they have a big terrorism problem. There's no question the leadership, many of the leadership uh, uh, modes or, or, or groups inside the uh, ISIL or ISIS, the Islamic State uh, uh, originated from the Chechen War. They had two wars with Chechnya. One of them went 10 years, brutal wars in which Russia did horrible things, that the same sort of stuff that that uh, Bashar Assad did, and one could argue that the same things we did to Japan at the end of World War II, when you, when you see your, 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 your countries at stake, people do very rough things in, in all-out war. Um, and so all of these issues uh, seem to me to be not fully understood um, by um, uh, Mrs. Clinton. But, you know, it's early in the—I in, uh, um, uh, I think it's—my guess is she's obviously going to be the candidate. And obviously, she's a very, you know, um, she's uh, as smart as they come. And I, I would think she'll maybe will be, I hope she'll get to change her views as, the, as time goes on. Uh, what is your assessment of her as Secretary of State in dealing with Syria? I mean, she's laid out what her views are. She wants Assad out. Well, I, I think uh, my only thing is I think there should be learning curves for people of that kind of power. And I think what happened in Libya should have instructed anybody in the government, including the president. Uh, that when you depose uh, a dictator, you have to be aware of what's going to come next, and you have to think long and hard about what you're doing. And I think, by any standard, the, the, uh, the getting rid of uh, Gaddafi uh, has proven to be a horrible event. It's increased the spread of uh, uh, the Islamic State around in, in Africa, North Africa, increased their access to weapons and to money. 
uh, et cetera. And it's a it's been a terrible a ter was a terrible decision, and we don't we seem not to have learned enough uh, 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 from it because, you know, if I'm Putin, and I'm worried sick about and um, forget about. Uh, what happened in Ukraine. It's terrible. I'm not defending Putin. I'm just saying, from his point of view about international terrorism, uh, he's seen the United States attack one secular leader, Gaddafi, um, destroy another secular leader, Saddam Hussein. Uh, no question that he was he he was not interested in in, in the spread of uh, international terrorism. Uh, um, Bashar, the same way, was always uh, a secular state. There was a tremendous amount of freedom for all sorts of minorities and sects, and people don't appreciate. All the minorities can only look to him for for safety. They certainly can't look to the international Islamic State uh, for any sort of solace in case they, they went out and take over the country. And, and so, if I'm Russia, I'm watching the destruction of three uh, Syrian or attempted destruction in Syria, three of, of three secular states, and wondering what the hell is America up to. Uh, they join with us in the worry about international terrorism. And I can't tell you how many people I know inside the military and the intelligence community, uh, as loyal to America as you want to, want to be, think our first move after 9-11 probably should have been to Moscow and to say, what can you tell us about terrorism? We've got it right here. And you've had it for a long time. Let's talk about it. You have to separate some issues. Um, but we don't seem to be very good. We seem to live in a world of propaganda and likes and dislikes above our own national interests. I, I, I want to go back to your—the key point that you make in this piece. It's a kind of coup policy, the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff conducting a very different policy than President Obama was espousing. What has the White House—how have they responded to your piece, if they have? Oh, I don't think they want to hear about it. They're, he's in Hawaii. Um, uh, the, the mainstream press is sort of like, you know, what? <laughs> this can't be. There's an anonymous source, and <laughs> you, you know the drill. We've been, you and I have been talking um, since 9-11. Uh, every time I do a story, and one of the things we, we, we talk about is, one of the reasons I'm delighted to go on your show is, at least here, I can have more than three or four sentences. And General uh, Dempsey, it, him leaving, what this means for their policy? Or has, overall, the policy shifted to what the Joint Chiefs of Staff under Dempsey wanted to begin with? There's a new leadership in the Pentagon. And both General—the the, the new chairman, Dunford, has testified um, a couple of times—I write about this at the end of my piece—and um, um, following the party line totally, which is that Russia doesn't is not a bombing any uh, Islamic states, and that um, the, there are moderates, and we, we can pull it out with the moderates. The new secretary of defense is on the same point, Ash Carter has said a few times in testimony, and he gave a speech at Harvard the other week. In which he basically said, followed the, the party line or followed the president's line dutifully. And I, I guess that's, you know, if, if, if you want to be in that job, you have to do so. And um, it's sort of interesting to me that at some point, uh, some other military leaders uh, decided that um, uh, they couldn't follow the policy because it, it was nonsensical and did something about it. Uh, I don't think uh, there was any attempt here to undermine the government. I think the attempt of everything that was done. Uh, by the Joint Chiefs and, and other members in the military in terms of um, um, uh, uh, trying to do something to them. It was a, really an attempt to change, change make a mid-course correction in a policy they saw that was deadly wrong. Last question about Turkey, the role it has played. It's, it's, this is a national disgrace that we're not, we're not able and this president, I think it, I just don't know why he he just just in, just in the last uh, uh, after the uh, the climate summit he he literally has had a, a private meeting with Erdogan, Erdogan uh, the head Erdogan. of Turkey, Erdogan yes um, uh, uh, in France and came out and said I'm with him all the way et cetera et cetera et cetera when in fact all of this uh, all of the intelligence for a long time has been that. He has, particularly in Hatay province, which is a contested province Syria controls, those, those, the border has been open for the uh, Islamic groups. And he's not only been funneling, he's been funneling arms and money to the most extreme uh, groups uh, for years. We know about it. There's been a lot of intelligence reporting on it. Um, his planes, once he began to join, allegedly join with us in flying out uh, combat missions, one of the first targets was, of course, the opposition Kurds, who are the best fighters. 
uh, inside, inside Syria against uh, the Islamic State. But he also bombed some of the Syrian army's own, own specific units, exactly the contrary opposite of what, was, what he said to do and what was being reported in the press. And Saudi he Arabia's role, a uh, U.S. other ally here in the region? Well, this is part of the, you know, the great farce of our old time, you know, that this U.N. meeting is going to take the views of Saudi Arabia and Qatar very seriously, when both of those countries have been the leading exporters of money and, in, case, in the case of Qatar, people uh, into the war in Syria on, on the behalf of the uh, Islamic groups. There's just no question that uh, they're both Wahhabi states uh, and Salafist states. And so are, so are the Islamic State, which is how about very extreme radicals. If there's going to be a new Syria under these states, there will be no Christians allowed, no Alawites, no, no Muslims that, that disagree with their point of view. It's going to be quite a state that we're supporting. I want to thank you for being with us, Seymour Hirsch, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, be joining us from Washington, D.C. We'll link to your latest piece in London Review of Books, headlined Military to Military, U.S. Intelligence Sharing in the Syrian War. Uh, Cy Hirsch is currently working on a book on Dick Cheney's vice presidency. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, spying on Pete Seeger. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Amy Goodman. I want to thank you for tuning in to Democracy Now! We are so grateful to our fans and followers for being a part of the daily conversation. By choosing a news source that's committed to the truth, you're carrying the message of independent media, reaching hundreds of thousands of people every day. In these times of war and elections, we need a media not sponsored by corporations that profit from war, but a media that's truly independent, funded by you. Democracy Now! is not paid for by the weapons manufacturers, the insurance industry, or the oil, gas, coal, or nuclear companies. We don't take advertising or corporate underwriting dollars. That means we rely on your donations to make our daily independent news hour possible. We need your support today to keep bringing you the hard-hitting, in-depth reporting you've come to expect five days a week. Visit democracynow.org, or you can call 888-999-3877. That's 888-999-3877 to make your holiday gift to Democracy Now! today. Thanks so much for sharing Democracy Now! stories all year long.